Is it on? Oh, right. So from the, the very beginning, okay. Uh, well, I suppose it started at school. That's where I met Gary, my best friend. We did everything together. We went to the Cubs together, had chicken pox together. We both had the same sort of moped, uh, listened to the same records, that sort of thing. And we even ended up working together while I was working for him. He got me the job. It's a good job. Yeah, I liked it. I was a toy demonstrator. Overly dysfunctional or... Okay, it's yeah. right if I knock off early this evening and I've got to see a vicar. Yeah, it's fine, sure. Cheers, mate. See, see you later. later. See you. Be good. Bye-bye. I think you'll find that these are more within your price range. Give us the budget package, dear. What are you doing here? You're supposed to be talking to the vicar. I have. Do you want it modern or traditional? What? The service. Do you just want to love and honour me or do you want to obey me as well? Oh, well, traditional, silly. I want a proper wedding with hymns and confetti and everything. Otherwise, I mean, well, what use is getting married? What's the thing? You can spend the rest of your life together. Excuse me, you can't afford that section. Back five pages. Traditional. What, so you don't mind obeying me, then? Of course I don't mind obeying you. Now, go and get the buttonhole sorted out. Well, I've got to get ready for my stag night. And the pins. How do you mean? The pins for the buttonholes. Oh, yeah. yeah. I love you. Bye. Mm. Bye. Bye. Here. You are aware of the blatant disregard for human rights in Turkey. She was my fiance, but she was also uh, Gary's ex-girlfriend as well. But it didn't seem to matter. He was, he was the best man. Dress to look perfect, even if the groom isn't. He's perfect for me, Mother, so just be nice to him. I am nice to him. I don't dislike him. I just pity him. I'm going to get ready now, Mother. The girls will be waiting for me. Mummy, I will look like a princess, won't I? You are a princess, my darling.
they cash and not a pocket full of uppers. I got one in the face. Yeah, well, of course, Hillary and me, our relationship was almost transcendental. We were linked, bonded, it was a, a perfect unity. Pity she caught you giving one to Tina from Household Appliances, then, isn't it? Forget it on Saturday. Oh, Neil, it's lovely. It's a rhapsody in gold plate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just don't tell her mum. Mm. Things not too good, then? Well, the old man's all right, you know, but I swear she's put a curse on me. That's such a defeatist attitude. You know, you've got, you've got to cut that out. I agree with Michael Jackson. What? Don't stop till you get enough. Oh, yeah. <laughs> your own way, Fleetwood Mac. Huh? I'm not like you, but you could be. Take it to the limit, the Eagles. One day at a time, Lena Martel. When it takes it all, Adam. Bollocks, Sid Vicious. <laughs> now you're just being stupid. Not everyone's like you. Hillary's not. She's not giving all that material stuff. Oh, really? I could tell you a few things, my friend. Like what? Hmm? Come on. Tell me. What's that noise? This town ain't big enough for the both of us. Spucks. Morris?
Standing, that's not much of an improvement. I'm sorry. I'm from London. I can tell. And I don't know where I am. The Isle of Grim Craig. Scotland? Can you tell me where the police station is? On the next island. Uh, where's the phone box? On the next island. The nearest phone? How many people live here? Let's put it this way. The population's recently doubled. What, you live here alone? With no phone? For the past 30 years, I. Have you got a boat? Do you need that watch? Hope I remember the way. Pardon me for asking, Flora, but how come you never returned to the mainland? Religious reasons. I wanted to be a nun, do you see? It's the only thing I ever wanted, to be admitted to the Order of St. Bartolf. But alas, it wasn't to be. Why not? They had a height requirement, something to do with their basketball team. So I... I came here instead, somewhere I could be alone with my god, removed from the temptations of the flesh. So from what I've seen, I think they're overrated. Bye-bye, Flora. Thanks very much. One question before you go. Yeah. Andy Williams, is he still alive? Yeah, I think so. Oh. <laughs> Thank the Lord. My world has gave up the ghost 16 years ago. I've had a few sleepless nights. Take care, Neil Price. May the Lord protect you on your journey home. And loosen the teeth of the rascal responsible for this. The easier for you to punch him out. Flora. God bless you. Farewell. Oh, Flora! Where's the phone box? How should I know? I'm not surprised. Probably in some cheap hotel with a floozy eating whelks. Look, Mummy, it was a stag night, not a sex orgy. And anyway, Gary was there to keep an eye on things. And you like Gary. Mm -hmm. Now there's a boy with the future. As a matter of fact, Gary's taking me for lunch today. Oh, he is? Mm. His eyes all sort of sparkle when he speaks about you. Do you want me to get married on Saturday or not? There's still time to call off this wedding, you know. I didn't say that, did I, Hilary? Of course you mustn't call it off. Well, then stop it. I want to marry Neil on Saturday because he's special. He's his own man. He doesn't just follow the flock.
you, I'd like to make a reverse charge call, please. London. Jesus Christ. Yes! Gary, you shit! Neil, you're awake. Yeah, I'm awake. And I'm in Scotland, and I'm freezing. How could you do this to me? Neil, you're overreacting. What do you mean? I'm in Scotland. That's another country. How did I get here? In a helicopter. I've never been in a helicopter. You'll laugh about this on your wedding night. How am I supposed to get to my wedding? Inverness Airport. Has Inverness got an airport? Of course. It's just like Heathrow, except it's smaller. Have you still got the ring? Yes. Open the box. Under the genuine imitation sponge, can you see something? Yes, there's a key. Good. Go to the airport. That key belongs to locker number 24. Inside the locker, some clothes and your wallet. There's no money in it, I'm afraid. I had to tip the helicopter pilot. But there is a plane ticket. You get off at Newcastle, I'm afraid. I mean, I couldn't get you a direct flight because I'm working on a very tight budget. But there is a connection to Heathrow. How am I supposed to get to Inverness Airport? Improvise. I'm sorry to bother you. I'm from London and I'm getting married on Saturday. Only I'm in Scotland and I've got no clothes and no money. Now, I know you probably don't pick up hitchhikers normally, but I'm begging you. I know it's a lot to ask, but please, is there any chance you can give me a lift to the mainland? Yeah, come on, it's empty. I'll just finish my tea first. Scottair representative. With passenger Neil Price, please identify himself to the cabin staff. Passenger Neil Price, please identify himself. Thank you for travelling, Scottair. We hope you have a safe onward journey and we look forward to seeing you again. No, thank you. I don't smoke. Where was the fence then? I'm sorry? Tony de Grigg? 
Stu with the spider. Tell me the tech, can't you? Oh. Know what this is? Yeah, told you about it. Well, it's a Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic the Hedgehog, yes. Now perhaps you wouldn't mind telling us where you intended fencing the other 999. How can I tell you when I don't know what you're talking about? Oh, but you do know what I'm talking about, Mr. Price. And you very much know how 1,000 Sonic the Hedgehogs happened to vanish from Plumleys in London, motto week here, because you came sometime yesterday. And you very much know that those same hedgehogs were hidden at 29 Marshallwick Road, London, N16. An address, I gather, that might be quite familiar to you. Yeah, it's my address. Well, now it's your address. That's why you're in here. So fuck it, quick, get it! Keep your back to the wall and your hands on your bollocks. Not that. You behave yourself. Why do they call you Nutter? Gets lonely being locked up. Really lonely. I've never been locked up before. I'm a toy demonstrator. Neil. I've got something in my trousers. Something we can play with. So that's 278 of me. And 37 to you. Excuse me, Nutter, but is Blaggers actually in the Oxford English Dictionary? I don't think it is. What? Well, if you're going to play a game, you've got to play it properly, haven't you? Is this in the Oxford English Dictionary? What? Nutter! You have an undisplaced fracture of the radial head. Probably did it when you fell over. Nothing too serious, but it'll need to be set. What I am worried about, however, is that blow to the head. Maybe some concussion. <laughs> so you'll have to stay in overnight so we can keep an eye on you. Nearly there. Thank God for that. I've been on shorter stakeouts. You don't really have to be here, Inspector. I'm sure the constable can cope. Mr. Price isn't going anywhere. I'm here for your protection, Dr. Kildare, and the protection of everybody else in this building. You're all the bloody same, aren't you? Who? You. Bloody middle-class guardian reading liberals, locking yourselves away in your big houses with your burglar alarms and your carriage clocks. It's easy for you to sympathise with the perpetrator, isn't it? You don't have to live and work among this human sewage. Thanks very much. Shut it. Grime does not pay. Grime? It's crime. Crime does not pay. That's a C. That? That's never a C. This is the man who took my statement. I've got better handwriting than that, and I'm a doctor. Can I have my phone call now, please? <sighs> this bloody hospital. Same thing happened to Ward B's life support machine last week. Well, that's it, then. We tried. Boy, is there another phone? Um... Downstairs. Could use Dr. Svenepeg's phone. Oh, Dr. Svenepeg! Still working on your essay? Essay? This is my thesis in psychopathology, not what I did in my holidays. Who are they? This gentleman is in police custody, darling. He's under arrest. Arrest? How interesting. Is he violent? His mother Therese, a Polish. No. Shut it, Rose. No, we don't get many visitors here. Not vertical ones, anyway. May we use your telephone, Dr. Svenepeg? The phone, yes, of course. Now, where is it? It's one of those cordless things. I had it this morning. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> I'm always doing that. Uh-huh, here it is. Oh, bloody hell. Yeah. Make it quick, Price. There's no dialing tone. 
Were you abused as a child? Hey, Dr. Svenepek is an amateur psychologist. Not when I've been graded in my thesis, I won't be. Just press the button and dial. Gary Bickle, toys. Gary, it's me. You've got to help me. The police have got me. They think I'm trying to fence hop hedgehogs. Neil, where are you? I'm still in Newcastle. I've been arrested. I've got a non-displaced fracture in my radius head and I may have some concussion. You're kidding. No. Look, you've got to get me a lawyer. A good lawyer. Your old man must know a good lawyer. Yes. Jack Emmanuel is one of the top legal brains in the country. Can you get him up here now? No. Why not? No, he's out of the country. But I'll get him onto it as soon as he's back from Cap Ferrat on Monday. Monday? It's my wedding on Saturday. My wedding. Well, can't you postpone it? Of course I can't. You know as well as I do. Hillary's got this thing about being married before her 28th birthday. And in case you've forgotten to get her a card, that's this Sunday. If I'm not there, she'll marry the vicar. Gary, can you do me another favour? Can you ring Hillary and tell her what's happened to me? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, Neil, got to go. OK, bye. Right. He hung up. Sure. Sorry. How about that one? Thanks a lot. Don't forget to come and see me next Pocket Money Day, will you? Go on. Be off. Ladies, gentlemen, friends, marriage truly is a blessed thing. And I know I speak for us both when I say that Hilly and I count ourselves as blessed to have you here to witness the birth of our union. So I'll put you all down for a copy of the wedding video. <laughs> you know what they say about wedding videos, don't you? Watch it on Rewind, it's always got a happy ending. Enjoy yourselves, all of you, but seriously, don't drink and drive. And remember, look after your parents, because they looked after you. Get back in bed. Uh, just... Get back in bed or I'll nick if you're disturbing the post. But I need to. I'm not trying not to it.
What would you have done? Dr. Carmen Svennypeg. Yeah. Weird bird. Yeah? Doctor? It's it's me, it's Neil Price. Sorry, who? You very kindly let me use your telephone yesterday, and then I stole your car. Oh, yes. The psychopath. No, I'm a toy demonstrator. Look, I, I just rang about the car. Uh, I haven't actually stolen it. I've borrowed it to get to a wedding. I can get it back to you on Saturday. Were you bullied at school? What? Have you ever cross-dressed? No, I said I can get it back to you on Saturday. Uh, and listen, don't worry about it. I'll get it steam clean and turtle waxed and everything. Oh, OK. And, uh, look, I'm, I'm really sorry about the inconvenience. That's all right. Bye-bye. Right. Bye.
cheer up. It may never happen. Ah, good portion. If this lot were still alive, it would probably qualify for a small farm subsidy. Can I have a chip, please? Help yourself. Thank you. You uh, ever suffer from unsightly fur build-up on your sweaters? How do you mean? It's a more common problem than many people realise. But wait. Don't throw that old sweater away. Try the new sweater shaver. See? No, thanks. No. Well, if you don't wear sweaters. <laughs> you, um, you eat sweeties, though, don't you? Oh, yes. The perfect present for the sweet tooth sophisticate. The rotopop romantic. It's a lollipop. It's a high tech lollipop. There we are, you see. Once you sucked on an automatic, you never want to go back to a manual again. What's your name, then? Neil Price. Well, Neil Price, have another chip. Thanks very much. Graham Seward, International House of Doohickeys. We sell the gadgets you can't do without. You didn't even know you wanted. That must be difficult. Bloody impossible. What about you? You on the run, then? Pardon? What did you say? Marriage problems, is it? Oh, uh, sort of. Women. You can't live with them. And yet it's anatomically impossible to get a blowjob by any other means. Well, <clears throat> I haven't got time for anything else, so uh, you can clean the plate if you like. Oh, thank you. Nice meeting you, Neil. And remember, if um, you ever need uh, an electronic nose clipper, you've got my number. Thank you. By the way, you don't need a lift, do you? I'm going as far as Sully Hull. You marry them? Not yet, no. Oh, man. I was once never again. Free spirit me. I'm a gypsy. <laughs> Every three miles, I stop outside someone's house and offer to sharpen their knives. We, I get gypsy. <laughs> yeah, nothing like a Neil. Mm. And a machine in total harmony. What is this wanker doing? Come on. Come on. Uh, I had a woman, see? That's typical. I'm not supposed to say this, am I? But if God had wanted women to drive, he should have given them brains. <laughs> Bit of fruit and nut? Yes, please. I know. Ben, can I use your car phone? Pardon? Your car phone, so I can ring my fiance, let her know I'm all right. Oh. Keep your eyes off me, silly. No, it's not no, bad. No, 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 it's just Ben. I've been there, man. I've been around. I've seen things so awful, they wouldn't even show them on satellite TV. Of course you can use the horn. Thank you. I've been a while. Hello? Hello? Hello, Hillary? Is Hillary there? Graham? That's never worked, old boy. I think it's the circuitry, see? If you look under there, there's some peanuts. Right, well, um, thanks very much for the lift. Oh, hold on. You got time for a cup of tea, haven't you? Uh, well, I should be getting on, really. Come on. I got to visit some people here, and I've promised them I'm coming with a junior member of staff. Do me a favor. Here we are, Graham. <laughs> Neil. Have you known Graham for long? Oh, uh, we don't really know each other now. We've uh, corresponded, haven't we? 
Yes. Sent each other photos. Even had the occasional intimate phone conversation. Not half. But this is the first time we've met, and uh, I must say, Graham, I'm not disappointed. Nor me, Brenda. Nor me. Is there somewhere I could um, freshen up? Oh, yes. <laughs> Bathroom's upstairs, first on your right. Right on. Oh, have you known Graham long? Uh, it feels like forever. <laughs> it's just lucky you were available. I mean, when I heard Nigel had got lost on his train spotting tour of Dusseldorf, I thought we'd have to abandon the whole thing. Right. And when Graham rang and said you were with him, well, I, I rang Caroline straight away. Did you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> that'll be her now. Come on in. He's here. Oh, good. I haven't done anything. No. We've got hours yet. Nothing. Graham! Well, here I am, girls. Oh, oh. this is Graham. <laughs> Graham, Caroline. Hello, Graham. <laughs> I was beginning to think you weren't going to make it. How was I? The traffic was just terrible. Is it? Yeah. Queue all the way up to the roundabout. Don't know if there's something happening at the hotel. Oh, not so far as I know. Sugar. <sighs> Graham. Oh, no oh, thanks, Brenda. I'm sweet enough already. <laughs> Caroline. Well, nice day for it. <laughs> Fancy a slice? This is the first time you've used a contact magazine, Neil. A what? How long have you been a swinger? I'm not a swinger, I'm a toy demonstrator. Stonking bit of Battenberg, this. It's Mr Kipling. Here, mm. Neil. Put this on. No, I, I, I can't. Did you not, sir? Oh! oh! Sorry. Don't get a gift off in the mouth. These two fillies are to trot. We just need an extra rider, that's all. Uh, no harm done. What should we do now? Any chance of muzzling me and leading me round the house by my dick? Oh, yes. Right after I've done the washing up. I'll come and watch, then. What would you like me to do to you, Neil? Excuse me. Neil? Come back! Neil? Stole my car. Sorry, Brenda, the shag's off. I sort of lost my enthusiasm. Delta Foxtrot Tango. This is Charlie Alpha Potato. Over. She really is a copper, then? I don't know if it's a Welsh thing or what. Hmm? your car, sir? Yes. See? Do you mind giving me the registration number, please? Yeah, it's uh, G15... No, it's K15... Uh, <laughs> I'm always doing this. You have to describe the contents of the boot, sir. Yes, there's some uh, electric nose hair trimmers, some uh, electric letter boxes, other stuff like that for my work. A spare tire, jack, uh, anorak, probably. 
Let's see, shall we? It isn't my car. I stole it. Well, well, well. I knew you was a thief, Bryce. An embezzler. A fugitive from justice. But now you're a bleeding master pornographer as well. Something of an overachiever, aren't we, Price? It wasn't my car. It belongs to Graham Seaward. He's a door-to-door -door sperm donor. Remember this. Grime does not pay. <laughs> Remember. Think about that when you're carrying your crap around in a bucket. Would you like your one phone call now? Yes, please. Oh, tough shit. You've already had it. You don't get a free boy just because you escaped, son, eh? Did you speak to my fiance? We rang the number you gave us, yes. And as a matter of fact, we've got somebody here that we'd like to talk to. I'll leave you two lovers alone there, Chilla. I said hello, Neil. Hello, Mark. When Hillary was seven, we bought her a pony. I took her to a used pony salesman, or whatever they call them. And she picked one out. It wasn't a nice animal, but it was the one she wanted. Ragtail, she called it. Ragtail. And that pony was trouble. Didn't mean to be, but it was trouble. Hated being ridden. Hated people, except for Hillary. It loved Hillary. She fed it turnips. Don't tell me. Lovett's got it to testify again. Shut! Up, Neil, I am speaking. When she was eight, she entered a local gymkhana. She expected to win a prize. But Ragtail wasn't interested. In the middle of show jumping, the beast stopped. The pole was only six inches off the ground, but it stopped. Hillary didn't. She had to have four stitches in her little forehead. That's when I decided to get rid of the horse. Later, when Hillary asked me, I said it had run away. I hated lying to her, but... And this is my point, Neil. She's my little girl. My own little girl. And I would do anything to protect her, including lying and much, much worse. So... I had Ragtail destroyed, and I never thought about that horse again until I met you, Neil. You are Ragtail. You don't mean to be, but you're trouble. You're a spineless, directionless, gutless, sleazy excuse for a man. You've daydreamed away the first 27 years of your life. You've achieved precisely nothing. Oh, no, that's not true. You have achieved one thing. You have managed to drag my Hillary, my little princess, down to your level. But you are not going to marry her because I won't allow it. I will not allow her to become a one of life's couch potatoes. That's why I want them to lock you up and throw away the key. You can't marry her on Saturday if you're locked up. And that's where you're going to be. Locked up! You're wrong, Margaret. I don't care what you do or what you say, but I will be there. I will. You say Stegg and I was with? Tuesday, the 15th. The same night as Hillary's hen party. That's when who says it was. Shit. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Bollocks. The Sonics went missing on Wednesday when he was halfway up at King Gore. His story checks out. Oh, 
sows. I can't charge you with nicking their jugs. Well, sure you've still got him for stealing that man's car. I would have if Graham Seaman wanted to press charges, but he's strangely reluctant to let his fellow Rotary Club members find out that he's a complete raving pervert. Oh, you're not going to let him go, please. No, madam. In the game of justice, I still have my ace card left to play. But you never thought you'd see this little lady again, did you, Bryce? Dr. Spennypig, was this the man who confessed to you that he willfully and maliciously nicked your car on the coldest night of the year? I'm not sure. What? Well, it was by phone. It could have been anybody. I chased your car down the street and I was driving it. What if I had already given him the car keys? What? Hey, eh? Doctor, are you saying you loaned your car to Mr. Price so he could drive it over the end of a cliff? You're a jammy sod, Price. I'm an innocent sod, Inspector. I haven't done anything. I haven't done anything we can prove. That's the only reason in the clear. That and the fact that it would be professional suicide to put Vampirella in the witness box. But I'll be watching you, Price. You so much as fart in a clear air zone, and I'll have you! You hear me? I'll have you! Get in. No. Get in, or I'll go back and sing like a canary. What's this? It's insurance. This is a kidnap, isn't it? This is revenge for your car. Are you going to kill me? Are you joking? No. Yes. Go no, then. Look, Dr. Svennypig. Carmen. What? My name's Carmen. Carmen? Mm hmm. What are you doing? I need you. What for? For my work. But I'm alive. Not that. My thesis. I mean, working in the morgue is fun, but it's not what I really want. My ultimate goal is to qualify in psychopathology and delve into the minds of people like you. What, toy demonstrators? No. Deviants, murderers, sociopaths. Listen, Carmen, can we get something to eat, please? I'm really hungry. And a bottle of the 78, George, you know what? Make that the 72. Certainly, Signor Bignal. An excellent choice. This is a special occasion, no? Oh, it is to me, Giorgio. It is to me. Grazie. Anything wrong, Hilary? It's just I don't know why you asked me out, Gary. Or why I agreed to come. Because you needed cheering up, old thing. And what better way than a nice, friendly dinner a deux? But Neil... Neil had thanked me. After all, Neil appreciates the finer things in life. Otherwise, he wouldn't have you, would he? You're a criminal, Neil. I know that much firsthand. That's... That's why I want to study you. You're... You're different. You're in touch with your dark side. Carmen, you've got me wrong. Neil, drop the pretense. <laughs> I know you. I know you're a lying, cheating, thieving, probably a violent man. All I want you to do is be yourself. All right. Let's go. I mean, when it comes to good food, good wine, and good company, Neil is a real gourmand. And this is Hilly, all dressed up for a Vickers and Tarts party. She looks good in that hat, doesn't she? Mm -hmm. Yes, she looks very nice. Mm. Got any more? Uh, no, no, thanks. Thank you. Have you got any? Yes. Yes, I have, actually. This is my mother on her 49th birthday. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, she's got your eyes. Yes, she has. And that's my father. 
Oh, yes, yeah, like it. Her. He's in a coffin. Yes. It was taken on the day of his funeral. Well, what do you want that hanging around your neck for? I like it. He never took a very good picture when he was alive. Well, put it away. It's sick. Why? Death is our natural state, Neil. It's the one constant. It, it unites everything in the universe. Animals, plants, planets. Everything else is just moving towards it. Have you ever seen a body decay? No. I've got some pictures I'll show you. What do I see then? Oh, why deny it, Neil? It unites us, rich or poor. We all end up with tags on our toes, Neil. Nothing lasts. Life is decay. Gary, have you heard from Neil? No. Well, not since the stag night. He's not been in touch then? No. Oh dear. Not again. What do you mean, not again? Hilary. This is very difficult for me. I'm, I'm Neil's best man. He's his best friend. But, well, Neil has this problem. What problem? With reality. He doesn't cope with it very well sometimes. He has trouble meeting responsibilities. I mean, frankly, I think it terrifies him. Oh, poor Neil. You know, that's exactly what the last one said. Poor Neil. Excuse me. The last what? The last fiancé. Yes. It must be terrible not being able to face up to your responsibilities like that. She was a nice girl. Worked in the post office. Neil was engaged before? Yes. Oh, God, he didn't tell you. And why should he? I mean, that's all in the past. And the girl is out of therapy now. Hollandaise sauce. When did you start masturbating? I'm not. When in your life? I can't remember. Can we change the subject, please? And talk about what? Why have you got such a silly name? It's a bit. It's Finnish. Like my family. Have you ever been to Finland? No. I was born there. The winters are so dark. The sun goes down to about two in the afternoon. Did you know that Finland had the highest per capita suicide rate in Europe? All right, you win. I was 13. Including my father. No, I meant I was 13. What? Oh, my father killed himself. I was six. My mother came here. Oh, I'm sorry. What was that? Will it? Um... Right. To sum up, you're a toy demonstrator. You love your parents, adore your fiancé. And your recent dysfunctional behaviour stems directly from your desire to get to the church on time. Am I still on for a lift? Oh, no, deal's a deal. What does mean? Oh, nothing. It's just hard to believe anyone could be that boring. <laughs> <laughs> we had some great times together, didn't we? Yes. It's just a pity you didn't remember any of them that day you went down to household appliances. Hilary, don't you think the same thought that hasn't occurred to me? Don't you think I haven't asked myself over and over again why I did what I did? I was a fool, Hilary, a fool. My feelings for you were so strong they terrified me. I tried to deny them. That's what I was doing with Tina. Denying. Can I have one of these, please? Oh, come on, yeah. Help yourself. Do you want one, Carmen? No, hurry up now. All right, all right. Neil, hurry. I'm coming, all right, all right. Neil! Why me, Carmen? You want to calm down. Neil! I'm coming, you want
Mate. Neil, let's go. What about an apology? Nobody move. I said nobody move. I can't move. I've broken every bone in my body. I've been abandoned, arrested, interrogated, abducted, and now to cap it all, I'm stuck in the middle of the great jungle cafe heist of 94. What next? I could shoot you. You'd just be doing me a favor. Just before you kill me, will you answer me one question? What? Why an armed raid on the jungle cafe in Solial? Is it a dry run? Are you working your way up to a Burger King? Were you just on your way to the local Brinks map and thought you'd pop in for a milkshake, you fucking moron? Honestly, Carmen, I'm fine. I'm more worried about you. No, back in the car. you're well ahead of schedule. I want to have a look at your arm. I can't believe they've only got one room. They're busy. Carmen, you do realise I'm practically a married man. I'll sleep on the sofa. Oh, excuse me. Right at left. Right. Mm-hmm. I think you're still in shock. Right, now, sit on the bed and take your top off, please. Hey? I want to look at your arm. Oh. Carmen? Mm hmm I'd like you to come to my wedding. Thank you, Neil, but I'm, I'm afraid I can't. Why not? Well, two reasons. First, you're a clinical subject, a patient. And it would be unethical to compromise my professional objectivity by becoming entangled in your personal life. Please yourself. What's the other reason? I think marriage is a complete crock of shit. Based on what? Mine. Huh. Right, now get into the light. Yes. It died. All relationships do. Eventually. They break down. Emotionally. Sexually and legally. Hat trick and I went for the hat trick. All right, now. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Does it hurt? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's mm. nothing out of place. I learned from it, though. Marriage. There's no such thing as a happy ending. That first adrenaline rush you get when you first fall in love with someone. Fades. And the first time you make love to them, the excitement, the passion, they can never be recaptured. Right then, sit up. Okay. No! Oh, what was in that? Morphia. It eases the pain. Well, Won't you give it to me before? I forgot. Now, take the first time you made love to Hillary. Wasn't it the best? I'll tell you after the wedding. Hillary's very old-fashioned. Well, take my advice. Save up a moment. It's the beginning of the end. It may take decades or just months. But slowly, everything you feel towards each other will ebb away. And you'll end up a bystander at the death of your own relationship. Like I did. Neil, what was going through your head when that man was pointing a gun at you? I wasn't even in line of fire, but... But I froze. I mean, I've seen hundreds of dead bodies. Thousands. I've worked with death. And I froze. But you... You looked death 
straight in the face. And you stared it out. So? So, you're different to the men I usually meet. Well, the men you usually meet are corpses. Well, that must be it, then. This is unethical. I'm a clinical subject. Trust me. I'm a doctor. And I'm a dead man if Hillary finds out that we so much as shared a room. Neil, relax. I just need to get some sleep, Carmen. Please. All right, then. Try to get some sleep. If you want me, I'll be naked and underwater. If you want me. Subject is Price, Neil, male, Caucasian, no distinguishing features. I'm alive, Carmen. I'm alive. We can work around that. <coughs> Central vertical incision. Oh, ouch! Oh, that really hurt. Maybe. Contents of stomach. Double hamburger. Ah, a milkshake. Strawberry or possibly raspberry. I'm alive, Carmen. Mm -hmm, you've said that. Well, this is an autopsy, isn't it? Very good. Well, you're supposed to do autopsies on dead people. I'm still in training. I'm not allowed to do autopsies on dead people. You're going to kill me! Are you frightened? Yes! Why? We all die. Remember what Peter Pan said? You can fly! You can fly! You can fly! No! He said to die must be an awfully big adventure. <clears throat> Carmen? Carmen?
I see. Thank you, Inspector Lubbock. Margaret! Hello! I can't believe I'm back. Honestly, at one point I thought I was never going to make it. Well, that makes two of us. So you found a lawyer then? No, no, no. It's a long story. But basically, all the charges against me have been dropped. Oh, I see, I see. That's great. Have you seen Hillary yet? No, no, I just got back. Listen, her mother found out I'd been arrested. She only came up and helped to try and put me away. You're joking. No. God knows what she told Hillary. You've got to go around there and help me out. You've got to put in a good word for me. What do you mean? We'll try and smooth things over before tomorrow. You want me to smooth things over? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, mate, I can't do that. Look, I know it's your fault I'm in this mess, but you're only playing a joke. I'm not angry with you anymore. I can see the funny side of it. So no hard feelings, eh? I can't intercede on your behalf, Neil, because basically there's been a bit of a change of plan. How do you mean? Well, you see, the wedding will go ahead, but Hillary will marry me. <laughs> you split up ages ago. That was before I found out about the inheritance. What inheritance? Hello, mate. What inheritance? About six months ago, some rich, oddball uncle in Singapore snuffed it. And according to his will, Hillary is going to inherit three quarters of a million pounds on her 28th birthday. But only if she's married. Well, nobody told me about this. No. See, Hillary's mum always thought that you were a gold digging waster so she didn't want you to find out about it so she told hillary not to tell you either that way hillary would know you were marrying her for love not luca they told you of course yeah of course see margaret and i always got along i just wish i'd known the bloody score before hillary caught me playing hide the hoover attachment with tina from household appliances that way we could all have been spared this whole bloody scheme it was all planned neil all planned a helicopter plane ticket Missing hedgehogs, the arrest, and they say I haven't got boardroom potential. You bastard. See, I just wanted to keep you out of the picture for a while. Let Hillary think that you'd bottled out of the commitment, let her mum stick the knife in, and let them both think that the three quarters of a mill was at risk. Then, then I simply stepped in, did my gallant hero bit, confessed to Hillary how I'd always felt. That kind of bollocks. You total bastard. The breaks, they don't come very often in this life, Neil. But when they do, you'd be a fool not to take them. I can't believe this. I've known you for 15 years. Sorry, mate. 
It looks like the best man won. today uh, very well thanks oh that's wonderful here yeah. give your horse an extra lump of sugar did you just tip the milkman <laughs> good morning darling Hey, don't morning, darling me. Did you just tip the bloody milkman you're just grumpy because you came back on the red eye last night Hello. Good morning, Poppet. Mm. Mm -hmm. Are you nervous? Just a bit. Oh. Ah, the blushing bride. And who are you marrying today? Can I have an update? Daddy, this is the 90s, and a woman's life is all about choice. Anyway, Neil had his chance, and he blew it. She's the spitting image of you at that age, Margaret. What the hell are you wearing? What do you mean? It's nine o'clock in the bloody morning, Margaret. The wedding isn't till half past twelve. You know I like to be ready in plenty of time. Besides, I'm expecting the videographer. Who? Ah. Oh. Who the hell are you? Jeff, I'm the videographer. You're a pain in the ass. Piss off. He's making Hillary's wedding video. But the wedding isn't happening for more than three hours. Ah, yes, but I've ordered the full documentary service. How much is this costing? 700 quid. Jesus Christ! Yes, but for that, you see, we get a whole hour's documentary created by a former winner of the prestigious Golden Lens Cap Actuality Award. Isn't that right? Yeah. <laughs> Bloody man's a pervert! Oh, darling, you must put your suit on. We've only got 40 minutes. Mummy! What do you think? You look wonderful! Just like a princess. My own little princess. Daddy? It's very nice, Hilary. Nice? Well, don't you like it, Daddy? Yes, my darling, I do. You look ravishing. Today is the day I lose him forever. If I don't find someone soon, I'm going to end up on the shelf like those Ninja Turtles. Well, so is Neil. Oh, piss off, Jackie. I'm single, not desperate. We're double alert. Excuse me, do you work with Neil Price? Yeah, when he can be bothered to turn up for work. Right, well, do you know where the wedding's taking place? You're done. Okay. Yeah, take it. I don't want it anyway. Gary. Hillary's marrying Gary. Oh. oh. Carmen. Ow, 
Oh, no thanks, Carmen. What are you doing back here anyway? You left your ring in my car. <gasps> oh, thanks for that. I don't know how I'd have replaced it. Bought a Christmas cracker. Can you pay for the Well, that's it then, isn't it? They're married. And no one was more surprised than I when she said that magic word, yes. Especially as I'd just come in off the substitute's bench, as it were. <laughs> no, though, though I do assure you, there's absolutely no truth in the rumour that if I hadn't been available, Hillary and her mother would have called in the pools panel. <laughs> no, no, stop, stop. No, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, why doesn't he shut up before he uses up all the oxygen in the tent? <laughs> well, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, but I'm not quite finished yet. Yes, you are, Bicknell. Well, it looks like we've got a late arrival. A very late arrival. What happened to you, Neil? Oversleep. What have you done, Hilary? This was supposed to be our wedding. What have you done? Neil, this is pointless. Gary told me everything. What's he told you? About your other fiancé. The girl at the post office. And you believed him? Yes, of course. Neil, Gary has no reason to lie to me. Hasn't he? What about the inheritance you didn't want to tell me about? Hmm? There's 750,000 good reasons for a start. Neil's obviously had far too much to drink, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, stop it. Ladies and gentlemen, can I have your attention for a little while? Thank you. Now, most of you know this was supposed to be my wedding. Well, half of you know that, anyway. I don't know what you've been told. Probably that I was chickened out at the last minute or that I'm some sort of sleazebag with a criminal past. Well, that's crap. It's lies. Like everything else this man says. I'll tell you where I've been. I've been to Helen back, courtesy of Gary Bicknell, this scumbag with a poncy waistcoat on. And why has he done it? He doesn't love her. He's done it for money. Because at midnight tonight, Hillary stands to inherit three quarters of a million pounds. <laughs> Come on, Gary. Deny it. Deny that on the day you stood before an altar in the sight of God and all your family, you stitched me up. How dare you? How dare you? Dare you come to my wedding? The most important sacred day of my young life and make these nasty, mealy-mouthed allegations. Deny it. Neil, I no longer consider you to be my best friend. Deny it! Neil, don't descend to his level. You've made your point. 
I wish you were worth it. You're a joke, Price. <laughs> you always were. Tell me, how long have you been shacked up with the Bride of Frankenstein, then, eh? Eesh. I've made a mistake and I'm getting a divorce. I want to marry you. Jesus wept. Hillary. Yes? She murdered Ragtail. What did he say? Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, the dance floor is now open. Neil, where are you going? Uh... Well, to be honest, I hadn't really given it much thought. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna use my brain for once in my life. Oh, Neil, I don't... I mean... What if all my relationships are doomed? Trust me. I'm a toy demonstrator. Total. 